Okay, I'm still here talking to Chris uh, Giudici uh, about uh, Masters Esoteric. Uh, and within the Esoteric tradition, there's the notion of traditionalism, mm -hmm. um, which I know is a big part of your research. Mm -hmm. um, what's all that about? What's it about? Um, traditionalism uh, started off with uh, um, a French uh, thinker called René Guénon in the early 20th century. Um, his idea was that the world, modern world, was uh, completely corrupt uh, and that access to the sacred uh, was made impossible by the um, consequences of modernity. So, um, in his early books, um, he kind of demolishes um, the ideas of other esoteric movements like this Theosophical Movement or the uh, Spiritualist Movement. And um, then with uh, other uh, publications such as uh, Christ of the Modern World, which is probably his masterpiece, um, he goes on to kind of to formulate what, what he sees as traditionalism. And um, basically um, the major scholar on traditionalism today uh, within the field of Western esotericism, uh, Professor Mark Sedgwick, um, uh, has uh, pointed out three distinct characteristics of the traditionalist movement uh, intended as the movement mm -hmm. that started with René Guénon and carried on with uh, other thinkers such as uh, art critic uh, Ananda Kumaraswamy and mm -hmm. Fritjof Schorn and um, Julius Evola in Italy. Um, and basically the three points are that there exists a perennial philosophy, a perennial wisdom which has been handed down through the ages, which uh, constitutes an unbroken chain of, uh, of knowledge. Uh, of course, it's nothing new really. I mean, we, we have that with Marcelli de Ficino in, in the Florent, uh, Florentine Renaissance and uh, we have the term philosophy of Renis coined by Agustino Steuco. Um, so uh, it's nothing new but uh, it, it was uh, quite a big um, concept in in France in the 19th century and Guénon kind of picked up on that. The second point is that of uh, inversion um, basically, Guénon considers everything that has to do with modernity to be um, uh, dangerous and to be uh, harmful for a person who wants to approach uh, the spiritual. So everything uh, we think of as progress is exactly. actually regression. Pro progress is regression. Okay. Uh, progress is, is regression, absolutely. and. Um, all the various avant-garde movements mm. uh, like Futurism or Dadaism, I mean, they were considered to be actual um, demonstrations of, you know, the barbarous conditions mm. in which in, in which the, uh, the mm. Europeans were living in, in, in those days. And what he actually uh, postulated was that there, the only way in which you could actually access to the sacred was to make a 180 degrees turn mm. and actually go back to uh, well-established uh, traditions. Mm. Um, in that uh, the modern world could be reformed and, and made better by um, um, delving into Christian esotericism and uh, Christian mysticism mm -hmm. and uh, Freemasonry. But he was kind of that period didn't last that long, okay. and he found his uh, vocation in Islam, and uh, oh, really? ended up moving to Cairo, and uh, um, considered um, Sufism, mm -hmm. Islamic mysticism in general, to be uh, the only pristine uh, access to the sacred. So that kind of perennial thread can be salvaged in Christian mysticism, but it could be partly from Sufist thought? Or? It, well, basically, um, the idea is that um, there, there is one truth, and mm. uh, that truth is like the, esoteric, the one esoteric truth which is behind all of the esoteric right. religions. 
Um, Guénon's problem with, say, Christianity mm. was that he thought it to be like beyond redemption. Right. Christianity itself had become entangled within modernity and thus had lost its link with tradition. Right. Uh, and that's why he favoured uh, Islam. Where you could see that was still very present. That, exactly. Yeah. Where you could see yeah. that was still present. And uh, with Guénon we've got uh, Islam, but uh, in Italy, um, with uh, Arturo Reghini or Giulio Sevola, um, who were close to the fascist movement, um, for a period at least, mm. um, we have a return to paganism. Yeah. Um, both uh, authors actually uh, wrote uh, a book with, with the same title, two different books mm. with the same title, which is Pagan Imperialism, Imperialismo Pagano, and that was kind of their putting out their ideas yeah. on how to salvage Italy from uh, from the you know more yeah. or less of modernity. And uh, the third point yeah. uh, that Marx Sedgwick postulates comes is uh, mutuated from uh, uh, Hinduism, and is that of the Kali Yuga, mm. uh, uh, as in the last of the cycles. So the Mahayuga is the big yeah. Exactly. And so we are currently living in the worst yeah. historical cycle and uh, uh, everything is going to get progressively worse until yeah. the palingenesis and a new beginning. And how can that happen? If you go back to tradition and access, access the truth, access you know, the objective truth of, uh, of yeah. uh, religion or call it what you want. But that's really kind of, a, I think, useful and clear kind of image of traditionalism. I had one question I couldn't resist asking. Right. There seems to be quite a link there, or quite an entanglement with, between traditionalism and politics. And yeah, then, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, people use it and then are uncomfortable about <clears throat> using it in relation to maybe fascism, maybe nationalism. So I guess it's easy to get ideas of the traditional and the idea of what we traditionally were as a people together, I guess? Yeah. Or? Um, well, to start with, um, Ganon didn't really like the term traditionalism right. and yeah. he, 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 he actually stated more than once that he wasn't, he didn't want to be considered a traditionalist because that had like some connotations of like um, attaching yourself to the past and yeah. uh, you know just being kind of a, a romantic, uh, you know have a romantic yeah. attachment to the past which is not what he was all about. No, so he's not kind uh, of sentimental at all? No, no, no. And um, uh, and of course, um, with, when it comes to politics, uh, you have traditionalist professors in academia who actually mm -hmm. are traditionalists. Um, Harry Oldmeadow comes to mind, for example. Mm -hmm. um, he's written on traditionalism and he does not consider uh, thinkers like Julius Sevola or to come to like modern day, uh, Alexander Dugin mm -hmm. in, in Russia to be traditionalist thinkers because their link to politics is too extreme and that is yeah. not what traditionalism is about and obviously being entangled to right-wing politics mm. is going to cause problems to the whole movement or field yeah. if we're talking about academia. But uh, Sedgwick on the other hand, uh, in making a list of the most influential traditionalists of uh, the past century, uh, quotes Evola. Uh, mm who considered, considered himself to be on the right wing of fascism. Right. That's quite a long way to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, his, uh, his, his famous quote is that uh, um, there is um, no reason to be anti-fascist, but at the same time, fascism isn't enough. And uh, so you can see how it's, um, how associating uh, such thinkers who I would consider traditionalists mm -hmm. um, to traditionalism as as a movement as a whole uh, could uh, jeopardize the work mm -hmm. of people who don't mm -hmm. see this link yeah. and don't think don't think that way and uh, that's the major criticism really that has been moved towards uh, Cedric's book uh, yeah. against the modern world um, and um, it's it's I mean 
to be honest, I think it's a fact uh, that yeah. some traditionalists uh, actually do have. Uh, well, I think if you're going to study it and write about it, you need to acknowledge that, that this exists and yeah. it's part of the story, even though it might be not part of all yes, the story. But, of yes, but look, the, the opposite strategy mm. is to say these people have nothing to do with traditionalism. They're mm. just using the, the word, the catchphrase, to further their political agenda. And uh, politics should have no place within the pursuit of the sacred if you mm, see what I mean. Yeah. But for Evola, that is totally inconceivable because the, mm. the, 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 it, it's, it's through your life as uh, Kshatriya, another mm. term from, uh, yeah. from Hinduism, that you actually live your sacred life and your political life. And it's, there's no difference between the two, mm. uh, at least in, in, in the early part of Evola's life. I mean, then right. he, he obviously... Um, um, does change his mind on some things and uh, um, is uh, more interested in the political side than in the uh, in the um, religious and yeah. sacred uh, aspect uh, of traditionalism. But uh, I think it's really, really um, hard to deny that these people actually were mm. like members of mm. the wider traditionalist family. Yeah. Well, certainly someone studying would need to know that as a fact, at least to give them some. Yeah. Well, thank you, and thanks for giving no us problem. a little bit of an insight into no at least some of the issues.